This is John for Global Traveler. Today I'm talking travel with Sahara Rose. You're a certified wellness travel coach and consultant and a certified corporate wellness specialist. Wow, that's a lot. How are you? I'm well, John. Thank you so much for having me today. That's a that's a hefty title. Before we get into, before we get into everything, explain what exactly is that. Yeah, so as a wellness travel coach uh, and consultant, what I do is, uh, especially in the corporate wellness and business travel industry, is help companies understand and embrace the value that travel has for their employees' well-being, as well as their employees who are on the road. So really just flipping the script, and instead of having travel be something that leads to corporate burnout or business traveler burnout, be something that can actually benefit people emotionally, physically, mentally, socially, and more. So give us your path to get to this point, if you briefly, if you would. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, so yes, I studied hospitality and tourism management in university. In 2010, I graduated and I was just like a lot of 20 something year olds and unsure of my career path and life path. So I decided to take an unconventional route. I booked a one-way ticket to Ireland. I packed a backpack and I thought I was going to go for a month and a half to Western Europe traveling. And I did what happened to me happens to a lot of people I got bit by the travel bug. And I wound up spending the next decade hopping around the globe to 84 countries solo. And it was within that decade long journey that I gained a really unique, uh, in depth perspective on the tourism industry, what travelers were looking for what people were looking for. I saw trends in technology trends in social media, uh, and how all of this impacted the tourism industry. And that's what inspired me to become a wellness travel coach and then also finding the Travel Coach Network. So what is it about travel? Why do people always turn? Because I've done these interviews a few times on the last few. I've always done the same thing. I've had a point in my life. I'm not sure I'm this or that. So I travel. What is it about travel? How do people think that that's going to clear their head, I guess? Yeah, that's a really great question. That's a question that I always ask when I was just a backpacker traveling. I always wondered that about why was it travel that people were turning to when they were quote unquote quitting the corporate job to travel or quitting the nine to five? I said, why aren't companies paying attention to this? What is it about travel? And for me personally, it travels very fulfilling. And um, through the tens of thousands of conversations conversations with other travelers over the years, um, there's commonalities in uh, why people travel. And it always stems to something more fulfilling. It is you know, travel does so much for us as human beings. It's innate in us. It uh, feeds our curiosity. It feeds our soul. It heals us. It gives us clarity. It gives us inspiration. Um, it's kind of that time that we have to be able to see what else is out there, but who are we and what do we really want out of our lives? And I think it buys people that time to really figure out all of these unanswered questions that we have for ourselves in our lives. And I know that's what was one of the catalysts for me going on my solo adventure. But I think a lot of people who are quitting the nine to five or quitting their job to travel, they have a lot of uh, unclarity in their life. They are lacking direction, they're feeling stuck. They maybe are not feeling fulfilled. So they wanna see you know, where does that inspiration come from and travel with the people we meet, the places we go to, the sites we see, the experiences we have, the challenges we face, all of that can lead to helping us figure out our paths. Interesting. It's, it's, it's just such an interesting concept. I, I hear it all the time. And it's just, it's funny that people want to go away to figure out their life here. Right, but, exactly. But it seems to be working because a lot of people are doing it. Um, you've got, as I mentioned in the, in the introduction, you've got a couple of very nice titles. How how do you go about getting certified as such? Yeah, well, as a certified corporate wellness specialist, that was through uh, the Corporate Wellness Institute, I believe. Um, and then as a wellness travel coach, um, I got certified as a travel coach itself and then added wellness into that because that was the niche, the direction that I was most passionate about um, myself. And I always believe that there is a lot more to wellness travel than just spas, gyms, yoga retreats, and wellness centers. And that travel really can be a powerful tool for us in our healing journeys, uh, whatever that might look like that we're in need of. Um, if we give it more intention to what we're doing on a trip, where we go, and how we spend our time. But you work from the corporate end rather than the individual personal end? 
Yeah, yeah. So I decided um, for my business models, I wanted to help people on a grander scale. And I wanted to make a bigger impact in the world uh, for the companies themselves. Uh, we hear company cultures all the time talk about the care for employee well-being. Um, we, you know, business traveler well-being has been on the rise, uh, especially after the whole pandemic happened. These categories of self-care and well-being and people reevaluating what matters most to them, getting employees back into the workplace, combating business travel well-being. I wanted to really tackle the problem at its roots and be able to make a bigger impact that way. And that's why I decided to build a model that addresses companies and empowers them and educates them so that they can then educate and empower their employees. So walk me through it. Um, you're, you go to companies to help them with their business travel, not vacations for their employees. Yeah. So when it comes to business travel itself, uh, it's in the world of the business travel. So the travel policies, um, I'm very much involved in the Global Business Travel Association um, on their risk management uh, committee because risk and duty of care is now transforming more towards, um, you know, duty of care instead or um, duty of caring for your people so that, um, I do a lot of speakings to at different events like ReCureCon or GBTA, um, do a lot of, um, you know, educational content for them, design individual programs, partner with the different types of business traveler wellness apps or business traveler well-being platforms in order to provide that information uh, for the companies themselves. So it isn't about, you're not about like finding hotels or restaurants or things like that. You're about more the experience and how to handle it. Yeah. So what I'm more about is providing the education and the information out there. There are decades worth of information on these various wellness benefits of <clears throat> travel that hasn't been brought to the surface or implemented into the corporate world or business travel world. For example, how can travel spark creativity and productivity versus travel being something that burns people out and, you know, destroys their relationships with their families. Travel can spark social environments. Travel can help us with our mental clarity, which then benefits our work productivity. Um, travel does a lot of different things for us physically, emotionally, spiritually, socially. So bringing this different types of information out there and all of these little small tips and tricks that someone like a business traveler can do, that isn't going to cost the company a lot of money in their wellness initiative, but makes a bigger impact in how that traveler is performing at, for themselves and for their company while they're on the road. Um, taking it, for example, taking advantage of what a destination has to offer, spending more time outdoors, like in blue and green spaces. There's tons of research out there on how just a little bit of time, 20 minute walk near a body of water, how that can ease our stress and our anxiety, you know, sparking conversations with the locals, how that can spark, you know, more social interaction and understanding of how to do business in a new location. So there's a lot of different benefits of how travel itself can flip the script on how business travelers perform. So it's more about the, for, for you and the company, it's more about you um, clarifying the, or e easing maybe the bigger picture. You don't necessarily say, you know, in Dallas, there's this great spa to do the blah, blah, blah. You might say like on a business trip, it's a good idea to take a half hour, hour at a spa. I mean, am, am I in the right ballpark here? Semi, yeah. So I don't talk about spas, gyms, yogurt treats, and all those things are already talked about in the business travel industry. When it comes to business travel well-being in particular, that's what we hear a lot about. So what uh, hotels, what do they offer when it comes to 24-hour gym services, yoga uh, mats in their room, Pelotons uh, that are available. That's not what I talk about. Plenty of people talk about that and it's available out there. Um, I bring more of a holistic approach to travel itself, the concept of travel itself. So again, tapping into that emotional benefits, that social benefits, the mental well-being benefits that travel itself can provide people with. Um, so yes, I provide a grander picture of the information, uh, but then I also empower travel managers when designing their programs to consider these things when deciding on who, what suppliers they choose to work with. Um, mm -hmm. And does that align with their wellness initiatives and their beliefs in the wellness benefits of travel? Then do you work with just like the management team or the specific manager, or do you actually speak to a company's entire 
staff? Uh, so uh, when it comes to uh, the travel programs, I work with the travel managers. I have different um, resources and programs that they can follow it on their own. I know that travel managers wear a lot of hats and they have a lot of responsibilities, especially after the pandemic, uh, restructuring what that travel program is going to look like. So I don't want to add too much on top, top of their plate and um, providing these resources for them. So different types of digital products for them to do on their own. Uh, but then on a grander scale, um, that's where I get to talk to the executives at these big events where I stand on stage to be able to spend the, spread these messages or in workshops that um, I speak at as well so that there's uh, give them some tools for them to go and implement and think about when they take back to the workplace. What about like independent salespeople, for instance, who might not work for a company specifically, work for a lot of companies? What could you do for them or do you not work with them? For individual like business travelers, you mean? Like yeah. as a salesperson yeah. is on the road. Uh, yeah, I mean, I have resources for the individual business travelers as well. So if, on my platforms, I have it depending on who you are as the customer. Are you a travel manager? Are you managing a program? Are you an individual a business traveler yourselves? And that's where it comes into play where um, I've partnered and collaborated before with different types of business uh, leisure or business wellness types of platforms or apps that the business travelers themselves individually can download and access the resources. So I have to ask you, with all this experience, all the countries you, you visited, what would be your number one tip for business travel? On an individual or a grander scale? Great. Let's go grander. Grander scale. I like to think bigger. Um, and my approach to it and my message has always been that again, we can really flip the script on how business travel is done and how business benefits, how travel benefits businesses. If we just tap into all of these benefits that travel can bring for us. Um, there was a big, uh, right before the pandemic, there was a lot of uh, information coming out about the burnout epidemic that was happening among business travelers to see how they were struggling physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. Um, and with all of this research that exists, if we just start implementing some of these small mental, emotional, spiritual benefits of travel really can shape, reshape the grander picture of how business travelers perform on the road and how companies benefit from business travelers being on the road as well. Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. You've been to all these countries. Obviously, there's, there, there's some obvious choices, but could you give us a couple of off-the-radar places that you really enjoyed? Yeah, absolutely. Uh some place that I I think a very underrated country uh, is the Philippines. Um, that's a place I've gone to a couple times now and lived for in a month after a super typhoon hit it. And the people and the culture are just absolutely incredible. Um, you know, countries like Thailand and Indonesia with Bali, they get a lot of tourism. It's always on people's radar. But a place that I think has just enough are just as much or if mo not more of culture and food and everything that we're looking for traveling, beautiful beaches, activities, water sports, everything, um, and aff affordability, beautiful places to stay would be the Philippines. Um, and then another place that I had gone off the beaten path to is a place called Lake Ored in Macedonia. A lot of people don't spend too much time down in uh, that region of Europe. And these cobblestone little towns and these colorful little buildings, um, it's my artistic view that comes out when I visit these places, but they also have these beautiful pristine lakes that you know can really take allow you the time for self-reflection and really immerse yourself into the local culture versus being in a big hustle and bustle of a touristy destination. So I've always gravitated towards these small little places. And when you've been to all these places, you've been to a lot of places as we mentioned, do you, um, do you take time at all to, to, because it's easy for everything to become a blur at some point. So do you, do you spend time at all just soaking it in going, okay, this is wherever this, you know, I'm just going to soak it all in for a minute and breathe and just take it in. Yeah, that's what I did. Uh, I never worked 
while I traveled. So those 10 years, it wasn't until that last about year, year and a half, maybe is when I started my businesses. Um, but for the majority of that decade long journey, I was just soaking it in. And I did that intentionally. Um, I wanted to enjoy my time traveling. I wanted to be able to, um, appreciate all I've worked hard for and the places I was going and versus I, I mean, I saw a lot of that's where I was immersed in the world of digital nomadism before remote work became a popular topic. So I saw people always working from their computers when I was in my hostels and people writing their blogs and stuck to their computers. And I wanted to be out in the sunshine. I wanted to walk around the towns. I wanted to meet new people. And so I intentionally spent that time really immersing myself into the destinations. Um, and that I think added tremendously to my experiences and the perspectives that I gained because I had that much exposure. And isn't that the best? I, it's one of the things I love about travel the most, just taking a minute, wherever I am, it could be anywhere, but just kind of soak it in and realize that I'm actually here and not just pass yeah. it through something quickly. Um, yeah, absolutely. What's, uh, name any place that you haven't been where you'd like to visit. Um, I would like to touch down in Antarctica just to say I've been on all seven continents. Um, but a place that I had always really, really wanted to go to would probably be, um, honestly, I haven't spent much time in Central Africa. Um, I've been to Northern, I've been to Southern Africa, but I have not been to Central and, uh, in my glo uh, travel coach network, there are so many amazing people who are from Africa and live in Africa. So I've been exposed to so much um, through them. And so it's been on my bucket list to go and explore some of those countries. Well, I'm sure you'll get to both of those places, I'm sure. And, and when you do, then we'll do an update, you know, because then you will have logged in all the continents. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Before I let you go, and I do appreciate your time, before I let you go, Tell everybody where they can find out more information about you and your book, whatever you would like to promote now. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, if you want to learn more about what I do as a wellness travel coach, um, you can visit um, saharrosetravels.com. Uh, if you want to learn more about the Travel Coach Network and travel coaching, that's at thetravelcoachnetwork.com. You can find me on LinkedIn, Sahara Rose DeVore. Um, all of my links and everything is on there. I'm very active on LinkedIn. Um you can listen to my TEDx talk on YouTube and uh, my book is just a budget and um, backpacking and mindfulness and travel coaching book. And that's on Amazon. It's called, Hey, you just go. Well, Sahara, thank you for your time. It's been fascinating to learn about everything you do and the places you've been and, and the services you provide. Um, I'm sure a lot of companies will benefit from them because as you said, travel can be, travel can be a lot of fun. It could also be a lot of stress and you're, you're there to kind of eliminate the one and tighten the other. So, yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me. It was a joy. Thank you. You have a great day. You as well, John.